Good evening, everybody. How you doing? Thanks for tuning in for some more Simpson Sessions. I've got some music playing that I just thought would make this stream a little bit less dry. It's rich in the back, and the lack of music, I think, just tricks me out of it. Uh, so I put some music in the background. Let me know if it's too loud, too quiet. I can turn it up, and it should all hopefully not get me a copyright strike on the channel. Music is a bit low. Okay, let's try to turn it up a bit. It is all very generic background stuff. It's from YouTube's uh, free to use audio library, so don't expect anything amazing. It's the music I kind of use on my build videos when I did a few of those. I turned up a little bit more. We'll see how we go. But let's get started with what we're here for tonight, which is what I'm really excited for. We're going to take a look at the Sluggers, which I'm keen. And then we're going to look at the Gladiators, which I'm very keen for. Because the Gladiator, I think, is a make or break it ship for Garrison. And I've been worried about these these gladiator submissions not because i think they'll be bad i think they'll be incredibly good and i think that's gonna kind of cause me some problems i'm already terrified for this campaign i honestly think looking at the votes and we'll maybe talk about some of those maybe look at the i think it's i think the uh, courageous vote is actually due to close tonight so we might actually look at what has won the courageous vote this evening as well i might close it a little bit early um just if we get through the stream, you know, I'd like to stay, get get this, get a decent stream going tonight. You know, go through the slug, go through the gladiator, maybe go and see what's made it through to the second round of the courageous voting. But anyway, before we, we take too long, let's let's jump in the ship works. Uh, I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes, just because I've just put, made the stream go live and I've just posted it in um, the Discord, just in case a few more people want to jump on. I, I think there might be, you know, maybe not too many people on right now. It's the middle of the weekend. It's an old time. But just to show you, we do have quite a lot of sluggers to go with. Uh, so yeah, Achilles Miller, what's going to happen with the Courageous vote is the winners of each of those brackets are then going to go into a second vote where they square off against each other. The reason we did it that way was I just felt there were too many good submissions for it to be a one-off vote. I wanted to give different votes and different philosophies a chance to shine and a chance for the community to discuss them as well. I know the Discord is discussing the voting quite intensely. Uh, because there's a couple of camps. There's a camp that wants there to be strategic ships in the garrisons. They want there to be missiles. They want there to be, to be early warning systems. They want there to be small aircraft carriers. And then there's also a contingent that want really big ships. Uh, this is a groovy song. So I wanted to give it a chance to vote. We're doing that for all of them. Um, so there will be a second round courageous vote, but it will be quite quick. But as you can see, we've got quite a few sluggers. Slugger was actually quite a popular ship. We've had a few people um, submit multiple. Stream, uh, chat, I really need you to be on top of me to remind me to check this slugger out that's at the bottom. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically TRM, unless there's a load, like to add, unless there's like not very many submissions. Say for example, we get three people submitting a new lightning for phase three, we're probably we're only gonna have one vote, right? It just depends on how many votes there are, whether or not it makes sense. But in general, I do want to give the votes a chance for like what people want to rise to the surface. But please do not let me forget about this slugger here. In fact, I might start with this slugger just to make sure that we don't miss it. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, the, if we got to the, we got to the same place, many had to miss ups, yeah. Uh, these submissions are my whole life right now. There are so many submissions to go through, and I'm loving it, but I'm like, wow, this is a lot of work. And also, I just want to give a quick thank out to all the Tarkans on my Discord who are putting in a hero's work um, by making the images that are going on the votes right now. The, you are making, you are lifesavers. Thank you so much. Um, I need to give you a proper spoken thank you um, with your names, but I haven't actually got your Tarkan names. Hang on, let me grab them. I want to give you a proper thank you. Um, so that is, of course, um, Duke Floof, a senior of uh, House Goldenhound, Tarkan Diner of Elamar, Tarkan Morgana Winter Le Fay, and we have a new Tarkan who should be joining the team quite soon. Um, oh, where are you? I want to make sure I get your name right. Uh, within discussion channel, it is... Uh, Tarkan Nathan of PMC Natco. Thank you so much for everything you've done to help out. It's been a huge help. Um, let's have a look at the Cumwatt AX3 Tulip. If you remember, the AX3 ships are static defense ships. These are sluggers. Um, Achilles Miller, the forms for voting should all be in the description of the stream. So the courageous one should be there. The flower one should be there. The flower one went live earlier today. If you aren't aware, the flower voting is open and also the um, ballistic vote is also in the in the description of this video. I wanna try and get the other ones up as quickly as possible, but the thing that slows me down is I need to timestamp the streams, and it takes me quite a while to do that, because um, I have to watch the stream, I have to skip the, it takes a while to timestamp it. Also, the last stream was just broken on YouTube for some reason, it just, it just wouldn't appear on YouTube for most people. Um, and in fact, it wiped off all the views and reset them. It had 500 views, and then I woke up this morning and had 100 views. I don't know what happened. 
But anyway, it's there now, it's working. Let's have a look at the AX3 Tulip by Kamwat. That's a cute ship. We've got Palash, I see that straight away. We've got a lot of armor, and we also have a Mark 1180. That is actually a really good submission, except until you notice the fact that it has only D30S engines. This ship goes up, it goes down, it doesn't move around. But it has a big gun, it has a lot of armor. It's, it's, it's a really armored shell. There is a little concern here, you've got a shot gap. Um, but it doesn't go into anything. As an annoying ship, this this could cause a lot of damage. Uh, it could take a while to take out. This is really heavy armor for such a light ship. Th it's it's good. It's a good submission. I like that you're sticking to your ethos. Uh, I know that the player can roll the ship, Neil, but the AI can't. Um, <laughs> uh, this is for the AI, and they're not going to be able to do it. Um, but but that doesn't all it needs to do is just hover in the air and shoot, and that's what it's probably going to try and do. So that is the um, the the armored glass cannon, as Lost Cause puts it. The uh, Sifrin put it. The, they took the glass out of the glass cannon. Um, yeah, you you can't do that, Shuggy. But the this isn't going to be flown by the AI, not by me. Um, yeah, there is Palash down here. Need to point that out. <laughs> the safety glass. I like it. That's a good good one. Um, it's it's protected from the bottom as well. So an AI ship that's that's gonna not going to do a lot of flying around. Whoops, I've tried, I always try and use the mouse wheel to scroll on this list and you can't do that. And I need to turn my mouse wheel off sensitive to scroll. Wow, that was crazy. All right, let's jump to the top of the list now. So next to take out the AGS kit soon. Actually, I should get my lore open, shouldn't I? Because I do have lore for a lot of these. That was my lore folder. Okay, this is the AG systems. Um, again, we always start with an AG system ship. And as people hopefully remember, the AG system ships have super heretical builds in them. They are um, cursed from the start. So the first one we're looking at right here is the Kitsune. Um, and the Kitsune, uh, is it even in my list here? Yeah, there it is. Keeps the wafer thin slugger shape, but now with better protected engines and missiles. Yes, I've done that before, Lost Cause. <laughs> I've zoomed out all the way and lost my ship. I had to re and I'm like, where is it? I need to rebuild it. Let me just reopen this and let's check out the Kitsune. Oh, it's like a, it's like a someone gave swords to a slugger in my, in my head. They've kept that, that kind of slugger feel. We've got power generators here. We've got two D80 Molots. We've got these, I guess they're shot traps or catchers from the sides. And we've also got, the, it's kept the two Zeniths as well. It's like someone stood on a slugger and squashed it even flatter. It's actually quite menacing. Uh, the protection did fall out of the budget, didn't it, Lost Cause? I, it, it is quite menacing, isn't it? Kitsune, of course. You know what? I have been playing games that, that are theming in Japanese culture for a long time, and I've always called the Kitsune in my head. It's just one of those words I've never heard somebody say. I've only just uh, read it, and so it's Kitsune. Thank you. Um, uh, actually, Hesso, I haven't closed Phase 3 yet. My plan is not to close Phase 3 as long as it is the... Um, what's today's date? I've forgotten if it's on my head. Um, we need to go wider. As long as it is the 14th of August somewhere in the world, Phase 3 is still open. So it'll be open for quite a while still. Yeah, you, you've still got time to submit. I haven't closed the submissions yet. Anyway, that's the Kitsu Kitsune. It's pretty cool. Let's check out the um, the Slugger by Bao Bao Lu. Um, we're going to see what you're going to see with the Slogger and the Garrus and the Gladiator um, submissions. There's some people we haven't seen before because these were quite popular. But let's check out the Slugger. Oh, I think we just crashed the game. Yeah, we did. That's okay. That's okay. I will be right back. I can fix this. I know what I know what has caused the crash. Just listen to the chill music. All I need to do is I need to get these illegal characters out of the, the name of the ship. Place them with A's. And that should fix the problem. Alright, let's try that again. It was actually Asian characters. We'll just make sure the You got tons of time, Hasso. If you don't quite make the cutoff, give me a shout as well. I'm not going to be particularly uh, nasty about the cutoff. All right, let's try this again. You can see the stream, just to confirm everyone can see this again. Let's see. No, it's still not loading. Okay, that is a cursed ship. I need to find out why that ship is so cursed. I'll check. I'll give it one more chance. Oh, I see it. There's another character I missed in the name. So I wanted to make sure that if I do this, ever do this again, people have got to keep me with keep keep with the characters that are legal. We didn't have any crashes in the last two streams. Yeah. Oh, that's, I'm I'm sorry that I'm starting with the the sluggers, Minihan, um, because uh, 
I want to keep the gladiators as an exciting thing. Right, we're going to try this ship one more time. If it crashes the game for a third time, then uh, we're just going to move on. No, it didn't. It was the characters. I was right. Wow. Okay. Instant. I'm seeing this. Uh, we've got flares here, which unfortunately, sadly, the AI won't use. But we also have Palash. So although the ship looks completely unprotected, it actually has um, complete double reinforced Palash all the way around. We are, managed to fit six um, Zeniths on the ship. We have two D80 Monots with only a slight block in their, in their coverage. And we've got a top speed of 477 kilometers per hour. This is actually a really nice ship. It's got a little bit of extra armory here just to try and protect the um, the bridge, but the power should keep it going a little bit longer. That's a hell of a lot more survivable than your traditional slugger. That's a really good submission. So that is the slugger from Bao Bao Lu. Next up, we've got Big Boat Slugger CV29. Do I have lore for that? I feel like I should. No, I don't. So this is Big Boat's uh, Slugger CV29. Let's check this out. Uh, the price limit of Slugger, has this thing gone over the price limit? 2727, that does seem very high, doesn't it? Do I have the slugger unlocked? Yeah, okay, this ship is way overpriced. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, the traditional slugger is 14960, so unfortunately, um, Baba Lu, we're gonna have to, um, we're gonna have to, you're, you're gonna get an honorable mention for, if if the Romani Empire had an infinite budget, this ship would be what they would get for the slugger. But unfortunately, that you're not gonna be able to keep this. This one's gonna have to be, um, uh, removed from the voting. I'm sorry about that because it's a cool ship and I can see you taking some time on it, but it isn't within the requirements. So anyway, we've got the Slugger CV-29 up next. CV, it's a carrier vehicle. Uh, it's got two Zeniths, it's got two um, LA-29s, and that's really all we got, all, all she, she wrote. Uh, a 10840 is pretty cheap. Um, top speed of 317 kilometers per hour. It's looking pretty cool. I like it. Um, just another cute little carrier. I think we've got a few of those from Big Boats. Um, I'm a little bit worried about the next one. This is from Brillcrafter. This ship is called Enjoy Missiles. All right. Uh, probably could, could have gone for T7s, but the community is just general just doesn't like the T7. We all love the LA-29. Um, the Courageous Aircraft Carrier is more useful than this. What did the Courageous Aircraft Carrier have again? I can't remember. It's been a couple, it's been a week actually. Uh, but anyway, here's the Enjoy Missiles from Brillcrafter. That... <laughs> So how many have we got? I think this might break the record. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14. It doesn't, it doesn't break it. It doesn't break it. 16 is still our record, but this is still a, a lot of Zeniths. If you guys vote for the orchestra and this, and they're both in the garrison, there's something like almost 32, like it, it's, it's, a, it's 30, 30 missiles will be how many between the two ships would be in, in it. Um, that's a that's a lot. Um, 336 kilometers per hour. Um, it only has um, it only has these two engines for maneuverability. Everything else is missiles. There's not even any armor on it. It's just missiles. Uh, for the budget, you're right. For the budget, it's a lot. Uh, the all missile gladiator. Oh, I'm expecting an all missile gladiator. Okay, that's the enjoy missiles from Brillcrafter. I, I like that it looks like it's jumping for joy. Next up, we have the Mantis from Cadmium. Let's check this out. Yeah, it's an orchestra true, exactly, TRM. It's an orchestra true. Oh, I like the cadmium. I like these angled um, armor components we've got on here. We've got two D80 Molots with full uh, coverage. Doesn't look like we've got any Zeniths or anything. We've got armor behind hull here. Um, probably a little bit weak to shots from above, but they've done their best to protect it. There is reinforced hull here. We've got some armor down here as well to try and protect this lower engine. Top speed of 225 kilometers per hour. It's not looking bad. It's not looking bad at all. It's a cute ship. Kind of feels like a slog. You've got better conversions bringing these guns together as well, which is something to think about. All right, next up we've got the Prejudice from Corazon Way. This has some lore behind it. Um, the Corazon Way, the Prejudice. The Prejudice class is a fire support platform designed to loiter over an area and provide anti-armor capabilities to our forces. Vulnerable to attack from above, it requires air superiority to really shine. The bag of escape pods placed directly above the CIC and living quarters give the Prejudice some of the best combat survival rates in the fleet, making it sought after posting, sought after posting for our soldiery. All right, let's check out the Prejudice, which has the best um, survival rates of any ship in the fleet. Oh, it's that's a cool ship. It feels like the type of ship a you know a garrison on the edge of um, the Empire might have to kind of do a little bit of everything. We've got the two 57 millimeter guns. We've got the um, the cannon. It's it's a, it's a 100 millimeter. It's not a Sarmat. It's just it's just an AK 100. Um, 
uh, two, two Zeniths. We've got the escape pods exactly where they said it was, and I got an I-29 just to give it a little bit of, you know, reach out and touch somebody. It's a multi-role slogger, and it looks really cool. It kind of fits that, that high fleet aesthetic. Um, the fact that they, where they've put their components with the, the ammo boxes, it just kind of looks cobbled together. Exposed bridge for sure. It's not made for combat, is it? They did say that it was designed for firing downwards. It's a cool ship. Top speed of 146 kilometer is, is, is a little bit down. Just, um, either put them in the, there's a field hasso in the bottom of the form for lore, or you can just add them as a text document. That works too. The weaponry is pretty solid. It just it has low armor. It's a good ship. Um, next up we have the squid from Forrest Kaminsky. Let's check this out. <laughs> Very heavily armored on top. We've got two Zeniths, we've got two AK-100s. Top speed of 468 kilometers per hour, which is pretty fast. Um, we've got, I like the FS, FS, FSS just stuck on the side here. Um, three fuel tanks is pretty low. It's a boxy boy. It's very well protected from the top, very vulnerable from the side. I think that's, that's where it's going to run into some problems. It'll lose these engines very, very quickly. If you attack it from this side, you could hit this ammo box and then it's all over. But it's still a cool little, cute little ship. Very well protected from the top. Protected from bombing runs, which is probably the main thing they went for there. All right, next up we have the Shrike from DBHM, which is the Juco Heavy Bureau of Machinery. Let me just get the lore open for that, because we do have some for them. Uh, what's this thing called? The... Um, the, sh the Shrike. Artillery vessel Shrike. Designed to replace the slogger, keeps the twin redacted and tighter, more survival package. Can really punch above its weight class. All right, let's check this out. Yeah, you you, you make a good point, um, Lost Cause. I should spend a bit more time looking at that. Let's just let's reload this for one second. This ship has a range of 857 kilometers per hour, a top speed of 468 kilometers per hour, and a combat time of 131 seconds. That is actually impressive for such a small ship. And we should we should bring that to the attention of everybody. Excuse me, one second, I to cough. I might need to go and grab some more water in a second, but we'll keep going for as long as we can. <laughs> I know, I'm just trying to throw some some fun into it, Neil. All right, this is the Shrike, um, which is the Juco uh, Bureau of Heavy Machinery's ship. So yeah, they've done exactly what they said. They brought the two D80 Mollets closer in together. They've kept the Zeniths. We've got a top speed of 361 kilometers per hour. A range of 794 kilometers per hour. Um, combat time of 158 seconds. Um, I like the the fact that it's got a, a non-symmetrical um, layout of escape pods to generator. That's kind of cool. Big problem with this ship really is you've, you've run out of money to protect it, I think. And it, and it doesn't have much in the way of armor. It's going to go down fast. Um, 100 ton per 1,000 kilometers is kind of cool. Yeah, that is actually really, really nice to see, the consumption. Um, that's pretty cool. I like that. It's a cute little ship. Again, the, a lot of these ships are weak to proxies, but they are sloggers. They're never going to have that much armor. Next up, we've got the Howitzer from Dr. Shismabob. It is a Howitzer. We've just got as much armor as we can slap on the frame, a jumpy little tick body, and a Sarma. Double barreled 180mm cannon. Top speed of 227 kilometers per hour, which is actually surprising looking at how much armor is on it. Um, combat time of 235 seconds, so it's pretty well fueled. What we don't have is much in the way of SCs, well, F FSS. We only have the one here. There's no palash or anything on the ship. It's 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 bringing the biggest guns possibly. Uh, that's cool, TW. Um, up gun for Sarmat. That's probably it. Probably looks. It is definitely going to be tougher. Just from the top and the bottom, not so much from the sides. Although we do. No, it's not a blade of crew quarters. There's a generator here. Um, yeah, but we, with the squall. We, yeah, the squall we're not going to see, but the um, the Sarmat we'll see. Ooh. It's 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 big gun, but like you say, 37 millimeter can shoot those shots down. All right, next up we've got the um, the Banshee from Ensign Foil. Let's have a look at that. The Banshee is a nice little redesign of the Slugger's main armament by we're swapping out the two 57 uh, two, two um, D80 Molots for three AK100s. Three AK100s really is a sweet spot for scary damage. Um, hey, Rodan Falcon Shaker Duke, how's this going? We've been going for about 20 minutes. So good. We just go through some Sluggers. Um, we've got two Zeniths firing um, on the ship as well. Top speed of 302 kilometers per hour, which is pretty fast. Um, combat time of 258 seconds, so it's pretty well fueled. And the fuel is very well protected in the center torso. Uh, two FSS. They're a little bit out of the way to really do a lot, but I understand why they're down here and not further up. It's a bit... You could swap them with this generator and this uh, these two generators, but you probably want to keep them more protected. Cute little package. Nice little ship. It's got good fuel efficiency and good speed as well. These sluggers seem to be very fuel efficient because, of course... They don't have to worry about armor. So here comes the golden floof submissions. We've got the three prong and the two prong. We'll start with the two prong, see what that is. Obviously, it's gonna have some big missiles, I'm assuming. 
Yeah, so here's a slugger with an AK-100, an R3 ballistic missile, an A-100, and then they've just added this tube just to be annoying. Um, and they put uh, an IRST Mars on top of the ship as well. Um, oh, really lost cause. Uh, it didn't give you a good notification. Well, um, I do announce the streams on the Discord as well if you're not on it. I do put them in the announcements channel. And I do post an event in the Discord if I'm going to be streaming. I'm not very, I haven't been very good recently about posting them in advance. But at least I, I posted this one, I think, five or six hours before it went live. I will try and get my stream notifications on the Discord up more, it, it, more in advance in the future. Um, this, is a, this is a scary replacement for the Slugger because although it won't do much damage itself in combat, it gives the garrison more reach out and touch. And I'm guessing the three prong is the same ship with three missiles instead of two. Yeah, it's got, it's got three R3 missiles, but it doesn't have the sensor anymore. Still got the AK-100, top speed of 195 kilometers per hour, which isn't a lot, but yeah. I get what you're going for, Fluff, and you've done it again. You've provided people the way to vote for ballistic missiles in a defensive garrison ship. Um, next up, we have the oh the, the BD-40 um, 1.5 Fergo, which will be a thin ship, I'm guessing, um, following the lore of their uh, manufacturing. Um, so let's load that up. Yeah. Oh, actually, I actually think this is really cool. Um, I, I'm loving the asymmetrical engines here. We've got a DAD Moloch, we've got an AK-100, we've got two Zeniths. Is there any active defenses? Escape pods. No, no active defenses. They, you like to use the big chunky legs. Top speed of 333 kilometers per hour reverse slugger because it's on its side. Yeah, and it's um, range of 1,108 kilometers. That's really efficient. 108 per 1,000 is nice. 239 seconds in the air. If The only downside, of course, is, is it is unarmored and these fuel tanks will probably go up quite quickly. But it's a cool looking ship and I really like the design philosophy of tall rather than long. Um, I think it looks really cool. These look like claws about to grab you. It's a cute ship. All right, next up we have the Harpy from Kega. This is the Harpy class. Let's check this out. So we've got the use of sideways mounted D30Ss on this one. Three of them. Uh, obviously got the downward order seal. Looks like it's gonna, wow, that's speed. Uh, okay, so it's got a DD Molot and it can apparently hit 1,196 kilometers per hour. Obviously, it's never going to do that in combat because of the way that the edges are set up, but it's still going to be very fast in combat. Um, range of 1,000 kilometers, combat time of 64 seconds, so it's going to burn through that fuel quickly. But if you want a gun brought to the first line, for the front line at incredibly high speed, the Harpy is the ship for you. It is ludicrous um, in terms of how fast it can move. Um, I am speed for sure. Uh, that is the Harpy from Kega. Next up, we've got Kipco ships. We're going to start with a Kipco Slogger 1, and then we're going to go through the rest of their variants, because I do like the Kipco variants. They're pretty pretty fun. Pilot knocked out. Pilot smeared across cockpit, I think, is, is the, the correct descriptor for the people, the crew of this ship. All, um, all, all how many of them there are. Okay, here's the uh, Kipco Slogger 1. It's using a lot of reinforced hull. We've got two D80 Molots. We don't have the missiles, but this is the, the basic... The basic, you know, ship you buy if you don't want any added extras. Um, top speed of 197 kilometers per hour, uh, range of 1,221, which is pretty respectable. Um, it's got a combat time of 444 seconds, and you know what? It'll probably hang around for a while because if you're fighting, aiming for center of mass, you're going to hit all this reinforced structure and you're going to hit this armor. But let's have a look at the variants. So we've got the um, Slugger One W plus A minus. Um, the module layout is triggering. <laughs> you can't, can't, there's going to be a lot of that tonight, I think. Um, so this is going to have up gun to minus armor. So this has four AK-100s, but no armor at all. Um, the generator is just on the outside. Is there any active defenses? No active defenses. The top speed is pushed up to 205 kilometers per hour. So this is all firepower, no armor. Then you've got the weapon minus armor minus speed plus variant. Uh, which has a top speed of 419 kilometers per hour, two AK-100s. Again, no armor to speak of. It's 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 gonna struggle, I think, to stay alive. And then finally, we've got the lower weapons armored variety, which um, has two K-100s and it has a little bit. I can see that what they've tried to do, but I think the budget has just been too restrictive to do exactly what they want. Although I do notice snuck in down here, it has flares. I thought that was a palash. No, it does have palash. It does have Palash. Maybe the other variants may have had Palash as well, and I've missed them. Let's just quickly check. Does the Slugger 1 have Palash? No, it doesn't have Palash. And I'm guessing the other ones, the others don't as well. Um, the armored, this is the armored one, yeah. So the, the money's been spent on the Palash here to give it some Palash. That might make it survive a little bit. It's a Lightning with Palash, although only 210 kilometers per hour. So those are the Kipco ships. Next up, we have the Palma by Liam556. Cool name. 
the Palma. Um, it's like a flight deck. Two Xanas, downward facing. Got to watch out for those on the... Uh, um, the, this music is all from the YouTube uh, creator playlist. It's, it's free to find. I can fire up the links to the music I'm using. It's the stuff I pulled from there to use in my build videos. I just grabbed it before the stream because I wanted... I felt like not having music behind this kind of made the stream very dry. Uh, we've got two D80 Molots, which we're seeing in a lot of ships. We've got a little bit of armor here and there. Some modules that are exposed, but you can't really get away with that with this budget. It's going to be hard. It's a cool little ship. Good, good, good conversions on the, um, the missiles. The bridge is as protected as it will be. Top speed of 182 kilometers per hour, so it is pretty slow. Um, combat time of 393 seconds, so it is pretty efficient. But then you've only got the two D30 engines, so that's what's going to make that happen. Next up, we have the Kukri from Many Headed Mishaps. I actually have uh, some lore for this one. So let's check that out. Um, designed in secret early on in during the Gathering Rebellion, the schematics for the Kukri were distributed among the various rebel cells and the ships built en masse in small workshops throughout Gedet. Intended as an attrition unit effective against Romani cruisers, the Kukri prioritized anti capital ship firepower over anything else. This thing's just rather flimsy, and after the Gathering got their hands on suitable numbers of proper warships, the Kukri got a reputation as a death trap and was relegated to defensive roles in smaller city garrisons. All right, let's check this out. The Kukri. That is anti-cruiser war weaponry. Yep, for sure. So it has the, the Sarmat. Top speed of 448 kilometers per hour. That's probably the fastest Sarmat I've seen in a while. Um, we've got a Fab 1000 here as well, so it has a bomb. Um, combat time 154 seconds. Rage 961. I think this would be easy to underestimate. There's no active defenses at all. Obviously, same problem as everywhere else. It has the, the risk of getting killed very quickly by prox fuse. Um... <laughs> that's the death car. I just wanted to be chill background stuff. Um, I noticed that they've protected these two fuel tanks that are the most exposed with a blade of crew quarters and a blade of uh, escape pods, which I like. Um, I think these are, these are extra crew escape pods just to cover that. Um, what else have we got? Um, yeah, everything else is just compact and well put together. It is the fastest Sarmat um, of Garrett for sure. All right, next up we've got the Leatherback from Marcus. It's a very heavily armored brick. We've got a DD Molot. That's really it. There's no active defenses. Um, top speed of 141 kilometers per hour. Range of 700. Combat time of 377. So it's going to hang around for a while. This could be a contender. Because it will just hang around in its very, very small frame. And just do damage with that Molot over a long period of time. And it will take a disparate amount of firepower to take out. Because it is so heavily armored. Um, this is this is this is this is interesting. I didn't expect to see a slogger um, submission with this much armor on it, but that is a pretty pretty good submission. You got a big gun, only one, so the firepower is low, but it's not that low, and and it's it's a good submission. I like it. Obviously, armor piercing will do that, but the question is, is when can you devote the armor? Like, would you want to spend the money on the armor piercing on this ship? Because I'm going to be struggling for cash. Maybe I want to keep that armor piercing for the other ships, you know, for the Gladiator. That, that's the question this is going to make me ask. And that, that's what the ship does. It makes it asks me a question. I like that. Next up, we have the Steer from McRobert. Okay. I'm just taking a second to understand what I'm seeing here. Really interesting with the gap around the bridge here. I wonder why that is put up there. Um, two AK-100s. We've got uh, flares, which sadly the AI won't use, but I still like to see them on designs. Um, where are the escape pods? Ah, there they are. I knew there were going to be escape pods. They're hidden down here. Um, it's over budget. Ah, oh, 15380. I wonder if they tried to build it to the um, the 5%. That's a shame, because this is a cool looking ship. Um, I think I might include... Uh, oh, I'm really frustrated with over budget ships, because I love them and I want to include them. Straight down escape pods, we want to get down to the ground as fast as possible. Um, I might chat about it with the Discord, and we may allow over budget ships into the voting, but we'll put a a sticker over them that says over budget so purists could be like no we do not want this in but i do want to showcase them at least and this is a cool looking ship i'm really curious about these gaps on either side um yeah so it, it's in the five percent even though the five percent wasn't allowed for for phase one i think a few people misunderstood that they did the five percent plus well i think we'll we'll put it in the voting but we'll put a big sticker over that says over budget so that the ship still gets showcased they might get a couple of votes okay next up we have the cast by many many um headed mishaps which I do have lore for as well. Let me just open that up. Maybe a bishbash bracket, yeah. Um, oh, that's not showing up. Interesting. I don't have any... This isn't many heavy mishaps. This is... 
I don't have um Okay, an ARM carry. I don't have lore for this one, my name is up. So if you if you submitted lore for it, I apologize. I haven't got it, but I'm curious about an ARM carrier. Um, but apparently AI won't use them, which is sad. Um, if, if we replace these with AK-100s, it will. And they're the same price. It will use the AK-100s. If you, it, We'll just do that for the submission. Um, so we've got an AK-100. Uh, but, but I mean, sorry, if we replace them with A-100s, not AK-100s. If we replace them with A-100s, it'll use them. Um, we've got an AK-100 here. Um, I think I just saw it in a short second of my brain. We have Elint. We have, is this an FCS? Yeah, we have an FCR with Guidance 2. Um, sure you didn't have a little bit more budget because you put some sprints on here as well. And actually having this radar works even better with the A100s, uh, which is just a win-win for your ship. Um, this is this is a, actually quite a scary submission. It can do a little bit of damage in combat. I love this tower with the fuel tanks in it. I think it's hilarious. Where are the escape pods? There they are. Yeah, cool. Love it. This is this is a good a good submission. Thank you for putting this to head, together, many hit missile. I love what you've done here, by the way. How did you do this with the... Um, these not turning into um, launch base. Is it because they're reinforced hull? Uh, is that why they have not turned into the launch tubes? Because I quite like the look of that. That's a uh, pretty cool. Make, make the bridge crew climb a burning fuel tower to escape. Well, look, they need to earn it, right? If they're going to get into an escape pod, they need to earn the right to get in the escape pod. They need to need to fight to survive. Um, double beveled hull pieces so they don't turn over. I, I get it because you because you're using the um, you're using this piece instead of this piece so if i just put these together oops okay so let me click it if i click these together and slap a missile in there yeah okay it does that that's quite cool to know that, that's a that's a cute thing um yeah all of these will turn into nukes i'm terrified of that idea of that them turn into nukes okay next up we have the mackerel for mr nathan i have a little bit of text a little bit of lore for this um so this is this is a Natco ship. Um, if you remember, Natco are primarily a bomb creation company. Um, that that's a good idea. Easy missile maintenance. I like that. Maybe easy installation as well. We're about to read the Makarov from Natco. Uh, Makarov. Envision is the de facto local defense ship, equipped with strong anti-ship weaponry and enough bombs to shatter armor of heavier ships. Armaments redacted. Notes. One of the slugger's flaws is the poor engine design layout, which makes it easy to knock out simply by taking out one of its engines. And this basically just redesigns it to make it less prone to knock out from engine loss. It's named Makarov like the Makarov pistol. Cheap and reliable Russian handgun. All right, let's check out the Makarov. This is the Castellan. I think it was the Castellan designed for border seas, not much with resources and long deployments. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea behind it. It, it just it could protect them. Oh, wow. This is a cool ship. We've got four bombs. We've got two DD mullets. We've got as much reinforced hull as we can fit on in a nice kind of um, crabby shape is what I'm going to call it. Distinctive crabby shape. 251 kilometers per hour. Um, top speed of 251 kilometers. Range of 1,083 kilometers. Thrust, uh, sorry, combat time of 310 seconds. You can stay in combat for a while. If you wanted a, a slightly faster, maybe bigger, bombier, um version of the slugger this is good i do like the antenna inclusion that's nice it is aesthetically a very pretty ship it's nice and symmetrical um i thought for a second we may have had some heresy here with these generators but we don't uh obviously there's there's maybe better armored versions maybe faster versions but if you want a good middle ground i think you've got it here the inclusion of the bombs is hilarious and i love it all right next up we've got the cyclops mark one from orange elephant orange elephant has continually brought interesting ships to the table and i'm excited to see what they've brought here so we've got a DD mullet, we've got four zeniths. It's got these little little wings. I like to sing from their insect ships. Um, top speed of 530 kilometers per hour. Uh, range of 1700 kilometers. To combat time of 233. Not to be underestimated. This is a fast ship. It's got some armor, but not a lot. Um, the bridge is a little bit exposed. That's probably the, the, the biggest issue here. But there's not really anywhere else you could put the bridge without maybe leveling it up one. It does look like a top-down crab. Yes, that is that is a good point. I'm looking at them side on, but if you look at a top-down crab, it does look like a top-down crab. Another cool ship from um, Orange Elephant. All right, next up, we've got the AG Systems Slugger um, from Pedal Pusher. AG Systems have their own lore. Um, oh, we've already looked at this ship. These ships always come up twice. I think I had double submissions. We've already looked at this ship. Solid armor placement. They didn't, haven't had a lot of um, armor to play with, and they've thought about where it would be. And yeah, I think the thing about the ship being up high, shooting down to protect the bridge and all the fuel tanks. All right, next up, we've got the Rhino from Kumwat. Let's check this out. <laughs> I'm loving the Zenith. We've got Palash on this ship. Three Palash on this ship. 
we have a um, 180 millimeter cannon. We have one Zenith. Don't underestimate it. It's pretty fast at 300 kilometers per hour. It has a good range. It's protected by Palash and it has a very big gun. Could actually annoy a cruiser. Three Palash in budget with a gun. This is impressive. Uh, the asymmetrical missile strikes again, it does. Um, Leahy the ship. One thing I'm really worried about in the voting for these ships is people not seeing that these ships have Palash because it's really hard to see when you're looking at the pictures to vote, but this ship has Palash. It's cool. I like that. Being able to fit that all that in there, um, I, I, I'm really impressed. What we're not seeing here is there is no... Well, hang on a second. Oh, yeah, there they are. I thought there was any escape pods for a second. There's... Um, Palash can't black Fox fuse. A cruiser could still swat it. That is a good point. If you've got the full prox fuse, then it's going to die. If you don't have the box fuse, well, then it's going to last for a little while. Depends on what you've got in your in your in your inventory. I do run out of prox fuse quite a lot because I tend to miss a lot. Um, what was I going to say about it? No FSS. There's no fire suppression in it, so if it catches fire, it's in trouble as well. Escape pods are mandatory loss cause. There needs to be enough for sixty percent of the crew. That that's something that I've put on as a build requirement, and I need to focus to do it. I decided to make these law friendly, so. There's no one, no military procurement exercise is going to complete without some escape pods. Also, they look cool in combat, so I'm forcing people to build to them. All right, next up we've got the Grubber from Salamander. We've used a large fuel tank. There's a lot, a lot of use of sneaking guns into um, under fuel tanks in uh, Slugger. Already lost cause. They're not, have they not got escape pods on them? Oh, I did. I hadn't. I hadn't noticed. <laughs> I hadn't noticed. Look, if we get to them, escape pods are not expensive. They are. Where are they? Emergency systems. They cost 100. I'm sure we can squeeze them on. You don't need very many of them, especially for these little ships. If we win the, if, if one of your ships wins the votes and it hasn't got the escape pods, then um, we'll have we'll work something out. Um, most people have built the escape pod requirement though. Um, we've got two D80 Molots. We've got two Zeniths. We've got a top speed of 210 kilometers an hour. We have a ludicrous range of almost 3,000 kilometers and a combat time of 978 seconds. If it doesn't get shot at, it's hanging around for a long time. Um, escape pods is a blade of armor, pretty much. Looks like what that's what they've done. Um, to protect the end, there's an engine here. You might not have noticed that there is an engine behind the fuel tank here, and there are guns here. Um, and there's more engines down here. The pods are mounted internally. They just probably, but this is a hole. You might get stuck in the ship. TRM, if you got it to work, if the game let you do it, it's fine. That's um, it, it sounds like you've you've found a loophole in my rules. So yeah, go for it. It's fine. It's an internal launch bay. Okay, cool. That is the uh, the grubber. Next up, we've got the slugger from Sifrin, uh, which I'm excited to see. Because Sifrin ships are cool. We have a Sarmat. Uh, nice. Um, top speed of 452 kilometers. Um, that is another fast Sarmat submission. Um, the power of the internal hull. Internal <laughs> um, hulls are good. Uh, no active defenses on this ship, but it is fast. Um, obviously very compact, so hits are going to start doing a lot of damage. Um, I like it though. It's quite cute. It kind of looks like a very official ship. Um, I like the slightly off-center gun as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's fine. My name is up. It's all good. Um, right, what's up next? We've got the D119 Slapper from TRAM. Um, so this is another one of their uh, the internal escape pods. Yeah, this is one of the, another one of those uh, ships that uses the RD59 engine. So let's check this out. Um, oh, that's quite. That's, this is another very well armored ship with two Vimples, so the, the firepower has had to take a step down. Top speed of 256 kilometers per hour. Um, it's a nice rem. It's a nice rem. Is this a Remco design? Yeah. Um, we've got the armor here that I really like. Um, you've got room for uh, room for Zeniths here as well, which I think follows the design uh, philosophy of all of these ships. They always usually have a Zenith mounted in these two side pockets here. Um, so if you know if a garrison commander had a little bit more cash, you could, you could mount a couple of missiles on it. Um, it's pretty well protected. It's got a pretty decent speed. It's got pretty good firepower. Honestly, it's a pretty good ship. Uh, I want to keep the larger ships anonymous, but I need to see them to get, get the vote working on them, unfortunately. But I won't see them in combat or anything. Um, well, maybe keep it secret which one wins the vote or something. I don't know. I'll get the, the community to, like, just send me the file. Uh, we'll have to work something out when we get there. All right, next up, we've got the Batsman from Tacos, which I do have some lore for. Um, the Batsman. The Batsman, uh, this is this is a Buford Rosso engineering. Um, I want to see the reaction to mine, oh god. Uh, the Batsman originated from a commission from the Romani Empire himself, given to Buford Rosso to create a next generation competitor to the Slugger attack corvette. The Batsman packs the same redacted armament as the Slugger, but carries twice the missile armament of its predecessor, all while maintaining the hard hit silhouette of the Slugger. The Batsman is not completely surmounted the Slugger, however, with many crews preferring the more powerful thrusters of the older ships. 
All right, let's check this out. I love the lore so much. Okay, we've got two D80 Molots. We've got four Zeniths. We've got a top speed of 230 kilometers per hour. It's not as wide. It is a bit thicker. Again, just so tightly packed. All of these ships are so, so tightly packed. Um, Krugel's Jam. <laughs> it is, uh, yeah, nice ship. But um, again, just so, so vulnerable to prox views. Quad Zenith is pretty good, though. That's a nice upgun. Like you say, T-Ram, I'm liking it. All right, next up, we've got the Flogger by the Supreme Patriarch. Usually some interesting build setups in these ships. Uh, keeping the same silhouette as his other ships, but losing the kind of long body that they tend to have. We've got an AK-100 and a D-80 Molot. We've got two Zeniths. I don't think there's any active protection here. Interesting stuff. There's armor here behind this end, this, this thruster nozzle. Um, we've got really nicely packed in components with as much armor as they can kind of fit in. Uh, top speed of 240 kilometers per hour. Um, range at combat time of 251 seconds. Range 749 kilometers per hour. It's a good ship. It's a nice little ship. I like the silhouette. I like the two different guns. Hopefully that means the AI won't spam them at the same time. Keep up a higher rate of fire between the two weapons. It's, I'm liking it. It's looking good. All right, next up we've got the, the bay from Tokyo. Let's check out the, the lore behind this. Uh, Stormer, Stinger, Fearless. The Bay class Corvette is one of the many lightly armed Corvettes in service with a nation near the Gathering's territory. It is designed to have enough firepower to support an aerial assault or defend a frigate, uh, defend a city, and be fast enough to follow any assaulting frigates. The Bay class Corvette is protected with an external hulls and is maneuverable. This makes sure that it can take both a few hits and dodge incoming fire. The Corvette is armed with, excuse me, okay, I misread what the redacted armament. It made it look like I had six AK-100s for a second. <laughs> Uh, making a dangerous proponent to any Corvettes and some frigates. Due to a change in doctrine, the neighboring city nation has stopped its production of Bay-class Corvettes and is in the process of replacing them with new and faster Corvettes. Now, most Bay-class Corvettes are either put in the reserve fleet or mothballed. They probably would explore the mothballed Corvettes if requested to another nation. So, it's, a, it's an export model. Um, Corvette, let's have a look at it. The, the Bay by Tokyo. So, yeah, this is what we saw it seen here. It has three AK-100s. Pretty nice um, armor uh, use of hull to try and keep it alive a little bit longer within the budget. Uh, top speed of 293 kilometers per hour. I wouldn't be surprised if one of the guys is 6 AK-100 either. I'd actually put money down on maybe seeing an, an 8 weapon. Uh, do we think 8 weapons is too ridiculous? I think someone would have done it. This is a cool ship though. This is a very cool ship. Um, it's looking nice. Nice work, Tokyo. All right, next up we've got the Cutter from Thomas Greenberg. Let's check this out. Cool. We've got some internal... Have we already looked at this ship? This looks very familiar to another uh, submission earlier on. Two AK-100s. Top speed of 371 kilometers per hour. Two Zenith missiles. Um, we don't have any internal um, active defenses, but it's it's very compact. They've tried to use this internal armor to try and protect the size of the ship here. Um, looks like an, an angry little crab or a Metroid, so it hits the aesthetics for me. Cool little Corvette. I like it a lot. I wouldn't be happy to see it in a, in a garrison. Yeah, I like the lower engines here as well. They look like mandibles. It's pretty cool. All right, next up, we've got the Eureka from um, Adventure 8612, uh, which I think is Grey Wiz Adventure. Let's check that out. This is, yes, the Spaced Armor Design ships. I, of course, I remember their ships. Um, what have we got? Anything under the hidden under the hull here? No. We've got two D80 Molots. We've got the Spaced Armor. Top speed of 406 kilometers per hour. That's pretty fast. Um, we've got a combat time of 225 seconds. That's not bad either. Um, another great space armor design. Shields up, exactly. It, it'll do the job. Um, totally cool. All right. Next up, we've got Crash Test Productions or Braveheart Productions Courageouses. We've got the Courageous Deluxe and the Super Courageous A. And definitely a Blade of Escape Pods. It should, this, the ship itself is a search radar. <laughs> yes, it is. They'll just send it up and wait for it to pick something up. Um, so we'll start with the Super Courageous A from Braveheart Productions. Again, they've managed to make a Courageous with a Sarmat, which I love. 283 kilometers per hour, not the fastest one we've seen here, but this one has Palash. Wow. This is a full Palash coverage. 300 kilometers per hour and a Sarmat. And it's got reinforced, um, oh, it's over budget. Ma big over budget. Big over budget. Ah, that's why it's so scary. Okay, that may just be in here. The Courageous Deluxe may be their main submission. Let's check that out. Courageous Deluxe is in budget. Um, two D80 Molots and a Zenith. Um, we're not going to see one with a 6 barrel 108 millimeter. Come on, Lost Cops. They're not going to make it in budget. So unfortunately, the Super Courageous is not in budget, but this one is. Uh, two Zeniths, 2D80 Molots, top speed of 161 kilometers per hour. That's because it's kind of protected with the reinforced hull. Um, combat type of 387 seconds, which isn't bad. It's just that it's only got the two engines, which is kind of fitting the Courageous theme. 
does look like a courageous but they just up armored and up gunned it which is pretty cool um it's a cool ship okay next up we've got the elysium by i have been gooped i have been gooped ships have been pretty cool i'm just taking it in because there's a lot going on here um top speed of 400 kilometers per hour yeah it's a, the, the courageous was a clean design you're right right it looked very meticulous i liked it this is not a clean design at all though um how many Zeniths? We've got three Zeniths. Uh, we've got combat time 156 seconds, range of nearly 900 kilometers. They've just kind of taken everything and smushed it. Like It's like they've taken a ship and just squashed it in their hands to pull everything together. Um, it's very messy. I'll have to go through the previous designs tier, yeah, which is a bit of a shame, but we'll check them out. <laughs> yeah, name one object from this picture. It, this is this is an interesting ship I have been gooped. The ship itself appears to have been gooped. It's been gooped together. Um, is there a little bit of heresy going on? Yes, because we've got a, a generator here over a, um, a hull mounting. Um, I bet the bridge does get very warm. Um, the ship is lightly heretical for sure. Okay, let's move on. Next up, we've got the Godvika from NC Mixum, uh, which I have some more for. Um... The Godvika, or Dianthus in English, is a light artillery ship that features a redacted turret. Ship was designed for supporting larger fleets by enhancing their firepower, so while it has flares to help it avoid stray rockets, it's not designed for direct confrontation, resulting in lack of armor and any meaningly, meaningful mobility. Um, the top Zenith is on a... It's on a heretical mount. Let's actually remove that Zenith and just have a look at the mount for it. It's on a double triangle piece mount. All the Zeniths are on weird mounts. Yeah, they're all on... They're all on double triangle piece mounts. But the game, the game is happy for them to be placed in there. And there's one named Varyag and I'm scared. Okay, here's the Chrysanthemum. No, the Danthus, sorry. Oh, he's a, he, he's a very happy, uh, tall boy. <laughs> We've got a, there's got a Sarmat here. Top speed of 316 kilometers per hour. From reading the lore, I thought it was gonna be very slow. But that's a pretty fast little ship. Um, no active defenses. It says that it has flares somewhere, but I don't see them on the on the build. Does anyone see any flares? According to the lore, there's flares, but I don't see any. Obviously, no active defenses. It's it's not bad. It's a pretty good ship. Um, I like the legs. They look pretty cool. Excuse me, I want to cough again. It's just a vanilla of Arya, I guess. Um, Let's stick, stick a road flare in the escape pod and launch it. Maybe the flares are uh, escape pods. That's right. <laughs> All right. Next up, we've got the um, two Z, the not red, not Notre Dame. I get it. The Notre Dame from two Z two. Oh wow, big ship. Very big for a slugger. Um, it is in budget as well. We've got two AK one hundred, three AK one hundreds. We've got a top speed of two hundred fifty three kilometers per hour. Two Zeniths. Yeah, two Zeniths. Any active defenses anywhere? I don't think so. I don't think we can afford any. Um, yeah, it, I get the Notre Dame. I think it's because it's got the towers. It's it's a cool ship as well. The convergence on the three AK one hundreds will actually be quite nice because they're built in a triangle formation. Very impressive firepower. Uh, it will take a few hits, but it will get drilled down eventually. But again, these are sloggers. They're not going to last a long time. And yeah, the first thing I did was I looked at the budget. I thought it's going to be over budget, but it's not. It's in budget. That's pretty cool. All right, we've got two three submissions from Twitter next. Um, from T we've got the Gracious, the Bas Bisphorus, and the Button. Um, is it lacking with crew? It's slightly lacking with crew, but I think that's fine. As long as it's got the escape pods, that's the important bit. I never put a crew requirement on. As long as it was mostly. I think as long as it's within 90%, which it is, we're, we're okay. Um, so we've got the Agricus from Twitter. Uh, it's an aircraft carrier with an AK-100, an RD-59, and an RD-51. At 300 kilometers per hour speed. Um, it's a side effect of using them as armor. Uh, combat time of 225 seconds, which isn't really that important because it's an aircraft carrier, but that's cool. Um, I like the reuse of this platform. It's a platform we've seen before because, of course, these are your mushroom ships. Um, yes, these are all mushroom ships. Is that right? They're all mushrooms or is the button one? Yeah, button mushroom, agricus mushroom. I think these are all your mushroom ships. Let's check out the bio, the Bisporus. Woof. Um, that, this is, this is, this is nasty, Twitter. Uh, you've got an RD, two RD-59, so two R3s here, and the AK-100, and it's armored. Top speed of 242 kilometers per hour, range of 793 kilometers. Um, I can't believe this is in budget. This is actually, this is, like, this could be strike fleet possible. Yeah, this, this could be a, this could be a strike fleet ship. I'm not even joking. It doesn't quite have the range, but with a tanker, 
Entire budget used 14960 on the on the dot. The thing is, the thing that's that's, that's, that's making me like stop and think here is is that the amount of reinforced hull you've managed to fit on the design. It's going to be quite tanky. This is this is legitimately scary. Even just with the AK100, once the missiles are launched, it's legitimately quite a quite a scary ship. Um, let's have a look at the button then. That's what, this is the last logger um, to be uh, submitted. So this is this is this is the combat variant. Yeah, uh, you've got 200 kilometers per hour. Um, again, what 14940? I think it's just under by 20. Uh, firepower six. Tomahawk 225. This is another good ship. Two AK100s is, is totally satisfactory firepower um, with a lot of armor and a good speed. And it's got good fuel efficiency because it's got the big engines. Um, nearly 3,500 3, tons. Does it have Zenith? Oh yeah, I just noticed the Zenith. They're downward facing here next to the escape pods, which are really well placed. Two Zeniths as well. Good ship. Another really, really good ship. Little Literal tanks, yeah. Big, big bulky ships. Okay. So that's us going through all of the sloggers. Took us a, took us about an hour. Um, thank you for joining me for that. Next, we're gonna have a look at the gladiators. I'm gonna very quickly go and grab a glass of water because I'm losing my voice, and I will be right back. And we're gonna take out the gladiators. Give me two seconds. I'll be as fast as I can. Alright, I'm back. Got some water and I've got the gladiators loaded. Are we ready for gladiators? I am very concerned. Some cool sluggers. Uh, we had some great intrepids, we've had some great navarins, the ballistics are pretty cool. But what are the what are the gladiators gonna look like? Well let's find out. Got quite a few to go through. It's been very popular. I think it's found its way to the bottom of the list, which is good. First of all, we've got the the Tenno. From AGS, as we remember, AGS systems are the ones with the cursed heretical builds. Um, the Tenno is not actually my list. Uh, yes, it is. Improve the armor of this already stellar ship. Okay, let's see what we have to deal with here. Let's go get the game back up and let's load this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. 
Uh, top speed of 309 kilometers per hour. Uh, let's actually, before, sorry, I'm going to go back. Let's just get in our heads how much the budget for the Gladiator was. 35640. Okay, let's go back to the Tenno. It kind of makes me think of, like, a samurai mask with, like, the this bit at the top, the kabuto, the, um, what's it called, the the, the beetle horns. Uh, you know, it makes me think of, um, was it kabuto, the two strings, the, the beetle samurai from that? Anyway, it looks like a samurai mask, yeah. We have one, two, three, four, five um, engines inside, two engines below, four AK-100, so it has the same armament. I really like the legs. They look very bulky and, and like they do the job. It just looks cool. Uh, very, very, um, just very blocky. There's no, there's, there's no aesthetic choice taken to sloped or curved armor. It's just we're slapping this armor on the ship and it's going to be bulky. That is our first gladiator submission. That is setting the bar 300 kilometers per hour, um, four AK 100s. Let's see what we've got coming off that. So next up, we've got the. I remember laughing when I downloaded this one. We've got the Burt from Brocrafter. Um, <laughs> you ready? Here comes the Burt. Okay, I like what you've done, Brocrafter, <laughs> with your six 37mm cannons. I'm really sad for you that elevation has stopped the bottom two from being able to fire up. That is so, so sad. Um, the name does check out. Very heavily armored, 151 kilometers per hour. Um, combat time of 252 seconds. There's just, it's just such a shame that you can't bring all six guns to bear on a target above you. Um, if you just place the middle ones with a triangle, uh, below minimum range, really? What's the range on it? Range is 531 kilometers per hour. Oh, 722 kilometers. Yeah, that is, it is under range, unfortunately. Um, Oh, that's a shame. It's under it's under rage and the guns are blocked. It's a such a cool idea, Real Crafter. There is a way to make this work. If you um if you use triangle pieces instead of uh the square pieces, you stop the elevation from happening and this won't push up out of the ship. Um and it would work. And in fact, I think a really easy fix is just this might work. Yeah, it's that simple. You still you would still end up with um In fact you could fix that as well. We just put that there and then we could actually just oh no we can't obviously can't do that with the bridge um but you still get better you can get a little bit better the bridge still makes it awkward i can't see what you did um all good all right well we can maybe we can maybe push it in and just have a under under uh, requirements sticker on it okay next up we've got the pyroclasm from poricon poricon ray do i have lore for this i feel like i do i don't but yes i do have i do have lore for it the name makes me think we're going to see a lot of 37 millimeters uh, we can fix it with some heresy, yeah. Uh, two by one ammo boxes, there you go. It's fixable. It's fixable. People like the ship enough, they want to make it work, and I should tell you enough. Um, but next up, we've got the Pyroclasm. The Pyroclasm is our answer to the Romani Gladiator. It is our armed with a superior redacted on each of its hard points. The flares and polish systems being much rarer in our stocks than our enemies have been removed. In its place, we've beefed up our fire suppression system, over-provisioned our ammo and power generators, and rearranged the internal structure to prevent any one failure from dispatching the craft. As well as the missiles have been brought into the craft, ensuring they actually see a use instead of being unintended of ablative armoring. The Romani will bring their gladiators only to find that we are their Vesuvius. Our pyroclasms will consume them. Alright, <laughs> let's check out the pyroclasm. 40 80 molots. 4 zeniths. Top speed, 229 kilometers per hour. Combat time, 234 seconds. Within budget. Within range requirements. Um, it's got everything. It's armored. It still has the same weakness as the old Gladiator as well. Because you can still get below it and shoot up with prox fuse and do a lot of damage. But it doesn't have the big batch of fuel tanks that would blow up struggle. This is a nice ship. Um, we've got no problems with elevation either. All these guns are elevated so they can shoot out over the armor. It's, it's a nasty, nasty ship. Um, I like that it is very powerful but has a weakness. Building with ship and embracing a weakness in it is um, a really cool thing to see in a ship designer. Um, it's a gladiator. A gladiator is a gladiator. It does gladiator things, exactly. <laughs> All right, next up, we've got the Manticore from Forrest uh, Kaminsky. Let's check this out. Um, okay, we are in budget. We're in range. Yep, yep. Uh, slightly over budget, unfortunately. They've gone for the 5%. Which is the same as their last ship, actually. So we can maybe let them off on that. Um, three AK-100s, top speed of 449 kilometers per hour. Uh, 
it's it's very well armored. It's pretty well armed. Um, they've tried to fix the problem of being shot up from below as well. It's just another version of the Gladiator, and they don't have any elevation problems. <laughs> this is the missile Gladiator. That Gladiator is not Gladiator. The Gladiativity. The Gladiator does. Oh, you guys are having fun. Anyway, cool ship. Uh, it's a ship. It's a little bit over budget. I'm sure we can just put that in the voting area. We'll just mention that it's over budget in there. Um, let's move on to the Heracles, uh, which I recently discovered is is the Greek name for Hercules. Um, that's just from playing a lot of Hades, which I'm really enjoying, by the way. It's a great game. But let's check out the Heracles from Dr. Shizma Bob. Here we go again. It is the Gladiator gladiating with D80 Molots instead of with AK-100. So we've got another take on this, right? It's in budget. 300, 254 kilometers per hour makes it a little bit slower than the other one we looked at. Um, but this one has less of a weakness from below because of these reinforced hull from the lower area. It pretty much is just a Gladiator redesign with better armor. I like it. Within requirements. Good ship. Okay, next up we've got the um, the, 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 Dina, the Gladiator from Dyna. Um, let's check out what Dyna's put together. Now, this is different. Wow. Okay. This is your... This is more of... Um, almost like a command ship in my eyes. I really like, even though it costs them a lot of money, the gapped armor to allow the, the um, FCR to fire through. Um, is this in budget? Is, this is in budget. Because we also have Palash. Palash behind the FCR. What do you mean by a mortal ship design? Oh, I see what you mean by a mortal ship design. Yes, it's not going to die because it's got... Um, we've also got sprints. Um, again, just to point out, we have Palash here. Um, the lower engine area doesn't really matter that much. Top speed of 223 kilometers per hour. It's got the range requirements we need. Combat time of 273 seconds, and it's got a 180 millimeter cannon and, two AK and an AK-100. This is a clever ship. Um, they've really heavily armored these gaps to try and prevent them from being shot into and they put the palash behind here as well because I think they want you to think this is a weak point and they've made it a strong point um, the whole lower side of the ship could be destroyed and it would keep on fighting because these engines here are well protected yeah using overlapping armor and tiny gaps okay <laughs> uh, armor is nice inner armor over the outer yeah it's got layered armor nice design I like it it does look unique it made me sit and think just seeing the rotating sections inside, it makes me think it's some sort of command ship. I like that a lot. That's the that's the Dyna Gladiator, the Gladiator from Dyna. Okay, next up we've got the Burrito from Ensign Foil, which I have some lore for. Whoops, I thought I was in my other window. The Burrito. Banshee, Meatball, Dumpling, Burrito. The Burrito, so this is from, um, oh yeah, this, this is from Ensign Foil. The Burrito has an impressive armament of, wow. Um, early prototypes include uh, redacted. Early prototypes include two missile hardpoints, but unfortunately didn't make it because of the tight budget. Like the dumpling, it also suffers gaps in corner armor. Its engines also have problems with overheating. Okay, so this is the burrito. Wait till you see the armament on the burrito. We hit it. We did it. This is a cool ship. This is a really cool ship. Uh, six AK 100s. It is in budget. It has the range requirement. Um, armament of wow. But there's the wow. Six AK 100s. Um, in 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 an in an elevated um ring configuration so the conversions on them should be pretty nice um that's a lot of daca if this thing has prox fuse if this thing has armor piercing ammo all the engines are internal as well 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 pointed out trm it's it's not going to take any fire from below it's very heavily armored the downside is the 171 kilometers per hour this is the antithesis of the lightning what's the slow lightning bolt this Hexagons are the best of guns. Everything is protected, you're right. I think they were trying to fit... Um, there's the escape pods, by the way. Uh, there's three of them. There's a slot here for something. But this is a very, very good ship. Very scary. Protected on all sides. No active protection, just um, reactive protection, I guess. But it's pretty cool, the meat bolter. All right, next up, we've got the Galvanus from... No, we've got the Dursky from Galvanus. Um... Hmm. We've got a DAD Molot. We've got two AK-100s. We've got a big brick. Um, top speed of 448 kilometers per hour. That's a high top speed. Um, we've got the range requirement. We've got the budget. Slightly over budget. Yeah, it's, he's gone for the 5%, which a lot of people, I think, have misunderstood. That's my fault for not making that more obvious. Um, I want to point out that we have armored escape pods here, um, which is uh, a design feature I didn't know you could do. So the escape pods are mounted behind a slow piece of armor to protect them. Um, slightly over budget, but I think it'll still make the vote. Because uh, it's within the 5%, and I think we're just going to have to allow that, which is a shame to the people who have built the 5%. All the ones that are over budget will be marked that they're over budget, I think. Um, next up, we've got the Golden Floof. It is the H 
C52 Glendale. So we're looking for, I'm really interested to see what Golden Floof has done with their Gladiator version of their tall and thin ships. Because um, getting armor on a ship that thin will be quite difficult. And they have done it with six AK-100s um, within budget. Or just just tiny over budget, I think, but within the, very easily. Um, we've got two Zeniths. We've got a Flare Launcher. We've got Escape Pods. We've got a nice a gap in the middle here. That's probably for elevation reasons, because these are all elevated. Um, oh, hey, Floof, you made it. We're just as we're looking at one of your ships. It's 10 bucks under. Excellent. I propose to call this the Shroud. This is like a flying wall. Um, heavily armored in the center. Obviously, the top and bottom areas have been designed to be ablative. Stout landing gear is a very good way to put it, Dinah. I appreciate that. Um, that's cool. So let's just compare that to the Dursky very quickly. 448 kilometers per hour. 173. So the flu version is slower, but is within budget. And that, that gives them the advantage. Six, six AK 100s is the most guns we've seen on the ship so far. Let's move on. Next up, we've got the Kiga. No, yeah, the, the Shepherd class from Kiga. 3D80 Molots, a cute little design, compact package. 323 kilometers per hour. That's nice. Um, under budget, yep, it hits requirements. What else have we got going on here? We've got Palash. Oh, that's why it's, yeah, okay. So not only is it armored, it has a layer of Palash as well. So it's pretty tanky. Pretty tanky little ship. Not to be underestimated. It's very easy to, to miss Palash on bills and think they're not as protected as they are. But we've got armor behind of a thick Courageous. Yeah, it does remind me more of a Courageous than Gladiator, but it has it has a non to be laughed at. Three D80 bullets is not to be ignored. That's a lot of firepower. Um, okay, I, I thought that on the Fergo. I actually really like the staggered engines on that ship, Golden Floof. I'm assuming you weren't here when I went through it. This is a very tough meatball. Yes. Um, there's a bit of shot in that meatball. All right, next up, we're on, on to the Kip Coke chips. Oops. Um, they've only put in one. We've got the Gladiator one. Let's check this out. 4K 100s, very heavily armored. I'm loving this, uh, these, these inverted triangles here to protect the engines from below. That's cool. Top speed of 248 kilometers per hour in budget. It hits requirements. Um, what else have we got going on here? Escape pods are here. We've got Zeniths, two Zeniths as well. Any Palash? Yes. Is this Palash? We've got Palash as well. This is the Super Gladiator. Yeah, we're looking at Gladiators now, Falshamega. We've seen some crazy ships so far. Ooh, yeah, this this gladiators this gladiator was popular. Wait till you look at how many wait till you see how many Varyak submissions I have. Uh, the Capola design on Cup is is cool as well. This is a guy, this is a contender. This is this is a good ship. Um armor, palash, 4K 100s zeniths. It's got the whole package. They've taken the gladiator, they're just trying to make it as protected as possible. Good ship. Nice work there, um, Kip. Alright, next up we've got the Vladov um from uh, Liam 556. Ooh, two AK 100s, one Mark 180. It's within budget. It hits the range requirements. Diet Archangel, I think so. Two Zeniths, two Zeniths. It also has Palash, Palash to protect the downward area. Um, they have also fitted flares, which unfortunately won't do anything, but they're still cool to put in here. Um, Falsham Jaeger, I have not closed the voting, the submissions for the Variags yet. You still have, as long as it is the 14th of August, somewhere in the world, the, the submissions are still open. This is a cool ship. Yeah, good work on this one as well. Uh, unfortunately, there's no upward palash, and we, we we have the use of um, a blade of crew quarters on this side, although we haven't done it on this side, even though they could. They could swap this generator with that crew quarters there if they wanted to. Um, but another good container, lots of firepower on this one. 216 kilometers per hour is pretty fast as well. All right, next up, we've got the Pariah from Many-Headed Mishaps. I do have some lore. I didn't close it. The, the, the is the, um... What should be in, it's closed for you, uh, Falsham Jaeger. It should be open. Let's check this out. So first, let's check out the, well, just while I wait for you to answer, I want to check the lore out for the Many-Headed Mishaps. This is your first armored warship. Um, oh, I don't have the lore for it here. Oh, I do have it. It's just in a different folder. It's in with the Gladiator, I think. Yes, the Pariah. Originally designed as a pirate resistant cargo ship, the first four of which of what would become Pariahs were seized by Garani pirates during their maiden flight prior to being fitted with armaments. The ship swiftly disappeared to hidden cities where they were refitted into dedicated trade fleet hunters. The slow speed of the heavy warships necessitated the installation of a small flight deck 
allowing a pair of fighter bombers to serve as scouts and to herd retreating cargo convoys into waiting cannons of the Pariah. Now the pirate gangs that first acquired the vessels have sided with the gathering, and the Pariahs stand ready to defend gathering territory. The pilots of Pariah fighters are notoriously competent, as a result of spending their copious free time hosting mob dog fights above the garrison. Um, Floof, I, I haven't read, found a ship lore that's too long yet. Um, how much have you written? I haven't looked at any of the lore that's been submitted in phase two or three yet. Anyway, let's load the Pariah up while we're waiting. Wow. Oh, this is, yeah, you've, there's, there's another ship with a similar layout to this that I love from um, Ubis Apps. I think it was you. Um, wow, this is a cool ship. We've got three D80 Molots. Um, we've got two uh, LA-29s that are on a kind of a flight deck that doesn't really matter if it gets shot at. Top speed of 160 kilometers per hour. I love this leg. This leg is excellent. It looks like it's about to jump into the air. Um, it, could be, it could be doing push-ups, yeah. I love that your ships... I love that the ships that you build tend to have a front and a rear, um, where a lot of ships don't have that. Do we have Palash here as well? Flares. Looks like you got Flares, but no Palash. Still pretty well armored. Good ship. I love the design of it. I love, how, I love asymmetrical ships. This ship looks really, really cool. Thank you so much for submitting it. It looks great. All right, next up we've got the Gladiator Mark IV from Meaty Spartan Guy. I like it too, Achilles. Um, it looks like a sideways turtle looking up. One that's 200 words and one that's more long length. If you read the extra fluff docs, it's more like feathers of everyone. I will definitely be reading the extra fluff docs. Don't worry. I'm just going to take a sip of water. But imagine seeing this thing come for you. That's a cool ship. All right. Um, fourth iteration of the Gladiator. Yeah, let's check out the Gladiator Mark IV. Four AK-100s. Two Zeniths. Spaced armor, within budget, required range, 256 kilometers per hour, lots of escape pods. They just move things around as much as possible by the looks of it. Put all the fuel in the middle, put the armor around the outside. Not a bad ship. 256 kilometers per hour is fine. It's gonna be able to take a lot of hits on the top. Gonna to be able to take some hits on the side. Again, like most gladiators, it's a little bit weak to the bottom, but this is a cool ship. I like the thought that has gone into the redesign. Um, you clearly sat down and thought about how you want to remake the ship, and you've done it in a really good way. All right, next up we've got the Dirty Harry from OKB Zvenza. Let's check this out. That's it. I get it. I remember reading your little thing, your description. The description of the ship was that it looked like the um, chambers of a revolver, so you called it the Dirty Harry. Six AK-100s, 248 kilometers per hour. It's within requirements. Um, we've got escape pods sticking through the armor here, here, and here. Um, excuse me, we've got the hiccups. Looks looks really nice and compact, actually. Uh, obviously, you got a little bit of concern with um, armor-piercing ammo coming through and detonating these fuel tanks along the top, but I can see that you try to keep the ship as small as possible, so that's the downside of it. It's a nice little ship. 6 AK 100s is a lot of firepower. It is a huge amount of firepower. Um, okay, let's check out the Fat Box from Orange Elephant. Again, I'm really interested to see Orange Elephant ships. I think they're very good. Let's see what this is like. It is a fat box. Um, four Zeniths, four AK-100s. It is within budget. It hits the requirements. Uh, what else have we got going on? Doesn't look like we've got any active defenses anywhere within the hull. No, no active defenses. 355 kilometers per hour is pretty fast. Um, range of 1,000, combat time of 220 seconds. A little bore, yeah. Um, four AK-100s, so it's got Gladiator armament. It hasn't gone above that except for the upgrade of the Zeniths. Um, it almost looks like it's wearing a corset or something with this bit here, which is interesting. Um, I like it. It's it's pretty cool. Probably the downside is the only the two gimbaled engines were the big issue. I went up for a few minutes. I think the prior I was over budget. Um, let me check that. I'd be very sad of it because I really like that ship. Rise 3654. Ah, did you build it to the... Um, 35640. Three, yeah, it is over budget. They both did the 5%. Phase 3 submissions are closed. I did not close them. Let me just quickly check that. I'll be two seconds. I did not want them to be closed yet. It's good to be a second just to jump onto the form. Unless they may have closed if... 10 gigabytes worth of data had been submitted. 
That's the only way that would have happened. Because I set a, a limit on the folder. It says, no, it says it's still open. Submissions are still open. Um, let me just post the link in the chat, just in case you got the wrong one. Here is the chat. That's the link to the phase three submission. Just check that out, just in case. Underrange by seven kilometers. Oh, but I love the prize so much. It's so cute. Oh, well. We'll, we'll have to make do. Okay, let's let's move on from the prior. It looks cool as hell, you're right. So we just looked at the Dirty Harry. Oops, I jumped way too far down. So got a few to go through. Um, so let's check the fat cup. So that's the AG Systems Gladiator. So AG Systems do have some fluff. Chips, lore, AG Systems. Um, AG Systems hail from the east. Oh yeah, we've already, we've already looked at the ship. I always do this. This is the one that looks like a Shogun uh, Samurai helmet. It's pretty cool. All right, next up we've got the Brick from Kumwat. Let's check it out. I've obviously misspelled Kumwat, but it's Kumwat. A brick, four D80 Molots. Unfortunately, there is some um, slightly frustrating elevation issues with the Molots placement, um, but that's still a lot of firepower. Do we have any active defenses or is most of the money gone for this? Under range? Ah, oh, under range, damn it. The range requirement seems to be pretty hard for people. 30 kilometers, I think we can we can forgive 30 kilometers, right? I think 30 kilometers is, 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 uh, is acceptable. Um, it's 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 a lot of firepower. They've gone they've gone big. The game doesn't rate it as high as the six AK one hundreds though. Have they gone for the five percent on the budget as well? No, they're under budget though. So maybe we could we could get that extra range in there. You could probably add a fuel tank. There you go. You just need to add a fuel tank, and it's still within budget. We can make it within budget easily. Um, okay, let's move on to the boxer by Salamander. Again, they like to use the large fuel tank and sneak things in underneath. So we've got four AK-100s underneath the fuel tank here. We've got two downward-facing Zeniths. We have flares. I don't think we've got Palash. Maybe we do. Yes, we have Palash as well, protecting the bottom of the ship. So it's it's the bottom half is protected with Palash at the sides. Top is protected by this heavy armor. And because there's no fuel tanks right behind the armor, it's not going to explode because we just got this fuel. Top speed of 245 kilometers per hour. This is definitely the brickiest brick we've seen so far because it is just one slab of armor cool all right shogun has submitted the snakehead m i've got a feeling the m might stand for missile let's check that out wow that's a big ship Six thousand tons is that within price um top speed of 270 20, 270 kilometers per hour it does look like a snakehead um got the big rd51 engine to give it that extra um range to, um, oh cool, I'm glad it's working for you, Fashmiga. I'm not gonna close it yet. Over by a hundred bucks, that's a shame. Uh, well, I think that's okay. But yeah, we'll just mark it not in budget, but that's okay. Two D80 Molots, 137 millimeter, lots of fuel tanks. Um, maybe better served by having a big fuel tank in there, but that's hard with elevation. It's a cool looking ship though. They spent a lot of time building it. Um, yeah, 35640 is the max. Uh, that's right, so it is 100 over. You can probably fix that quite easily. Remove one tank. Um, 35730, there you go. Oh, it's still slightly over. Two tanks? Now it's within, well, it's still not within the budget. Oh, because I haven't deleted these, hang on. No, the, the tanks aren't helping. Anyway, we can mess around with that later. That's the, 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 the Snake at M. Next up, we've got the Krahat by Sir Ose. I'm excited to see this. Ooh, much smaller than the Gladiator. Four D80 Molots. It's within budget, within range. Two Zeniths, and it, we've got flares. I don't think we probably can't fit any Palash in here. That's a very compact little ship. Form bullets is a good amount of firepower. Good speed at 276 kilometers per hour. Um, courageous on whey protein. Giga Intrepid, yeah. That's a good way to, it's a Giga Intrepid. It even has the little the little armored flicks up here and the, the, the armored cap underneath. That's a cool looking ship. You also don't have any elevation issues. Um, so you thought about that really nicely. That, that could be a big potential of threat. Only sad thing is that the AI won't use the flares, but they're still nice to put in there in case I buy one during the campaign. All right, next up we've got the Gladiator from Slum Zinc. Let's see what they have submitted for us. Whoops, this is a nice design. Let's check this out. All right, they've kept the armament with four AK-100s. Um, looks like we've got escape pods here. I'm just, I'm just looking for any palace or anything under the armor before we look at anything else. No, no active defenses under the armor. Dead on budget, which is nice to see. Um, do we have the range? Is the range on, T-Rem? Um, top speed is 259 kilometers per hour. Very well armored. 
Um, six kilometers over minimum range, perfect. That's all it needs to be. It just needs to be over that minimum range. Um, and arm this engine. I'm really liking how well protected this engine is with the um, this the half slab curve. There's not blocking any of its thrust. And then we've got these internal engines that are very well protected as well. Um, good ship, 4K 100s. We know that's a good armament from the uh, the Gladiator. So you don't need to change if it isn't broken. All right. Next up, we've got the DT39 Centurion from D from TRM. I'm excited to see this because I really like your ships. Wow, we got the six AK one hundreds. We've got no Zeniths. Um, I have trouble with this one. Yeah, we'll have trouble with that one. I have trouble with this one as well. Three five three seven zero. So it's within budget. It's got the range. Speed of two hundred eighty kilometers there. I will be making my own ships to use against the enemy uh, TW. I've got to do that. I don't have a chance otherwise. But my aim is to use cruisers over light vessels. So there won't be any lightnings or, or audacities in this campaign, which I'm going to make me very sad. But I'm trying to get a, going to try and get cruiser gameplay under my hat. But I'll probably get destroyed. Um, the skate pods kind of mess the armor. Proxies will get through. I think it'll still last for a long time. It's um, still a very good ship. The six AK one hundreds. The most amazing thing about it is that there's no elevation issues for all of them. That's pretty cool. All right. Next up, we've got the Felon from the Supreme Patriarch. Very different. I was expecting a ship to look like the other Supreme Patriarch ships. This ship looks very different from their other ships. Um, over budget, so they've gone for the 5%, unfortunately. Two R5 Zeniths. Um, we've got three AK-100s, one D80 Molot. Um, yeah, it does look like a, a rice cake. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, we're going to have to have, like... A whole voting area that is just over budget ships, I think, because there's quite a lot of them that have gone for that 5% budget. Um, I, I maybe wasn't clear enough that the phase one wasn't affected by that extra amount of cost, but that's okay. We'll work something out. We've got plenty of submissions, which is cool. Uh, it kind of looks like a spaceship of all the ships I've seen so far. Um, I would like to imagine a Sylvester will only run against these. <laughs> Scary. Um, yeah, that's cool. That's a cool ship. All right. Next up, we have the Buckhound S from the Funky Furry. Let's check this out. Okay, three AK one hundred is a down is a is a down gun, but looks like we've got Palash. Yeah, we've got a full protection of Palash. No nuclear missile carriers. You're right. Um, two Zeniths. We also have flares. We've got escape pods. So even though it looks slightly armored, it has the Palash, and the these engines are like protected within this bucket here. Interesting ship. Three hundred twenty-two kilometers per hour is quite fast. Different take on it by taking the guns down to add more speed and more other weapons, and also the inclusion of Palash is a big increase in in. In, in ship longevity for me. I think that lasts a long time. All right, next up, we're going to... Oh, give me one second. The dog is just barking. I will be back as fast as I can. I might be a couple of minutes. I will be as quick as I can. Bear, bear with me.
All right, I'm back. So sorry about the delay. Uh, there was a possum in the back garden, and she wanted to go get it, but I had to tell her she was not allowed to chase possums. All right, what did I miss? Um, no missing cars yet. There's some more gladiators. Lost Claus is off. Sorry, I missed you, Lost Claus. Have a good night. Um, cars need combat ship with gladiators. Might like to be a candidate. Yeah. It's lack of floof cars. Combat, it's a very combat central original. I did my slogan designs because they're less important for combat, so that's easy. Fair enough. I don't think missile aircraft cars would be the most popular combat every design. The glider itself is a very strong gunship, so we'll try to keep that. Yeah, I think most people are building, um, most people are building like combat gliders, which is cool to see. All right, next up we've got the Furious from Tokyo. I actually have some lore for this. The Furious Stormer Fearless Bay. Oh, I don't seem to have the lore for the Furious Stinger Stormer. I've got the Fearless, but not the Furious. I don't have the lore for this one, unfortunately. Um, uh, well, your missile carrier uh, submissions are getting a lot of votes. <laughs> Golden Floof, you should know. Um, not that I want to sway the voting at all. Oh, so we've got a 5 AK-100 Gladiator here. What well, purchase with armor? We're seeing very similar designs. People, people know the Gladiator is a good ship. They're not trying to redesign something that's broken. 29 kilometers per hour. It's within budget, but looks like it might be $40 over. Um, top speed of range of down to 70 kilometers, so it's within range. I think it's just a good design. Just simple. Doesn't you know, just adds an extra gun, gets the armor coverage better. The downside is you've lost the Palash to get for that extra gun on, but that's a pretty good ship. The bat, damn on, bat bang on budget, excellent. All right, next up we've got the Attila from Thomas Greenbug. Let's check this out. Uh, okay, we've got Palash coverage on this ship. Uh, we're bang on budget with this ship. We've got escape pods, we've got four AK-100s, we've got four Zeniths. That's pretty nice, honestly. This is, this is looking good. This is a, a good looking ship. Um, that Palash might get blown off is a little bit of a, a, a an issue that I might see with that. But honestly, that's probably picking, you know, picking it at small flaws. This is a very, as you just said, very to the ship. It's got a smaller silhouette than the, than the Gladiator. So it's a little bit harder to hit. Um, top speed of 280 kilometers per hour is absolutely fine for a ship like this. Um, it's got a very good internal setting here where the main ship, the guns, they're all very well protected. They're all very internal. So it will last a long time. Good ship. Now... They've also submitted the Atilius. Uh, yeah, it's very slender for that equipment. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Let's see what their other submission is like. They have taken it to. Is that over budget? Is that three four or three five? Three five four six zero. Oh. Yeah, this is actually under budget because it's three four four six zero. Oh. Yeah, under 20, 20 bucks over. Okay, yeah, twenty bucks over for this one, which I think we can probably forgive. Um, four AK one hundreds. We've got. What, six uh, Zeniths? No, you're wrong. I think it's under. Yeah, it is under. And you've got the um, the Palash as well. So this is another scary design. The only thing is it just has less armor on top in exchange for two more. It's a Gladiflower. Flower. Yeah, Nathan, you're right. It's a Gladiflower. Flower. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, let's moving on. Next up, we've got the um, Isium from Grey Wiz Adventure, or Adventure 8612. Wow. Okay, so they are sticking to their spaced armor design. With the addition of Palash and Flares, um, four D80 Molots. Um, it's got a top speed of 252 kilometers per hour. Uh, 35280, that is within budget as far as I can see. Um, I don't know how long this would last. I'd be really interested because not only do they have a blade of small hull, they actually have a blade of large hull here as well. Some of this large hull is just here, not on the sides here, but at the top, it's just here to get shot away. Um, so this ship could last a long time. I just don't know how good this strategy is with your armor i don't know how good it is um yeah it's a very interesting design it does have flares a lot of a lot of people put flares on their ships which i think is fine like i see it as just a flavor thing they're not that expensive really um how they're 800 credits like, it's, it's a bit of cash but if you've got it left over it, it means that if i buy the ship then it's got flares on it for me which is nice all right next up we've got the chicago triton sim let's, let's give it a quick try why not I'm very curious. I don't want to see too many of these ships fighting, but I am curious to see how long this will last. We'll put it up against a, a mid, small mid difficulty five. See how long it lasts. I'm not gonna give any special ammo. All right, the game rates it against a slogger, Sarma, so not too heavy enemies. Let this gun load. Can you use my flares? A close fire shot. Okay, we lost a big chunk of side armor there, which I think we may have lost the Palash as well. Did 
there goes Asarma. I should let it take the hit, shouldn't I? Instead of trying to, I'm gonna let it take hits. I'm just gonna let it take hits and see how well it does. It seems to be doing pretty well so far. Come on, shoot me. Okay. Let's just get this out of the way. We don't want we don't want a courageous on the battlefield. I'll take this missile. The armor is starting to shoot through the armor now. But we're still fully combat capable. We've still got all of our guns. They just took another missile. We're still fully combat capable. We haven't lost any engines yet. We're starting to lose our armor, but this, this could take a lot of fire. I think that's a, a pretty decent example of that this isn't a bad design. Even though it looks very different from what we see, it can take a lot of firepower. Okay. So that was the um, Isium. That's the Chicago from I've been booked, gooped. Next up, we have the Templar from Nickname Toms. Uh, five AK-100s. It is bang on budget. Do we have any internal tricks for armor protection? Nope, we don't. Try to protect the bottom as much as possible. They've taken the Gladiator. They've squished it a bit. They've added an extra gun. We don't have any elevation problems here. Another great design. 210 kilometers per hour. There's a lot that it's going to be tight this voting. It's kind of come down to, I think, what people like the most. Do they like 6 AK 100s? Do they like 5 AK 100s? Do they like the 4 D80 Molots? Do they like look at the ship? Because a lot of these are very, very similar. But they all look good. Next up, we've got the Secular from Nazareth. 4 AK 100s. 4, four uh, yeah, fast, 300 kilometers per hour. It is very unusual to see 5 AKs. We've got a couple of ships with 5 AKs that have come up. Um, that's exactly what I'm thinking, Achilles. It's going to be a tough vote. This is another great example of a, of a good gladiator rebuild. Um, 300 kilometers per hour, or even as the kids say, yeah. Um, got the internal engines. We've got fuel packed under the armor, which is um, can be a little bit of a trap because it looks like it's safe there, but actually it's the first thing that gets hit by armor-piercing ammo. Um, just a good redesign. It, it, it's, it's, it's quite far under budget. There are places you could push this. You could go and maybe grab some palash and slot this in. Okay, so there's not very many places to put palash. That's probably why it's not here. Um, but you, you you could maybe push this a little bit further with spending a little bit more money, but it's still a good design. Um, it is a gladiator, just pushed a little bit further. All right, next up, we've got the AX3 Dias from Come What. I'm really excited to see this because this is another one of those static defense platforms we've seen from them, and they're all great. That's me clapping. This is a gladiator <laughs> with the six barreled 180 millimeter gun on it. Well done. Well done. He did it, the manman. It's within requirements. It only travels at 100 kilometers per hour, but it has the range and it has the price. A squall and a gladiator. I'm I am so impressed. I don't know how long the ship would last in combat, but I would be scared to see it squalling time. Power is low, yeah, but it doesn't need the, the thing is it'll it'll I think it'll be fine. Well done. This this deserves a reward for just the audacity of actually actually doing it. They put a squall on a on a gladiator. Well done. All right. Next up, we got this Vihander from Tacos, which um, test to make sure it flies. Yeah, okay. Do you want you want to see it in action? We can see it in action. Let's let's test it. Uh, let's give it. Actually, nah, it's not H ammo. The problem, the thing about this ship is it has only engines to go up. Right, as long as it can stay in the air, I guess is the important bit. Oh, it's it can stay in the air. Oh, whoa, okay. Here's the problem with the power. The gun tracks so slowly. Look how slow the gun is tracking. I can't get the gun to track upwards to shoot at the ship. Oh, we're going down. The gun tracks so slowly. But that firepower... We have no FSS, by the way. No traverse at all. I wonder... Oh, I didn't mean to restart. We'll just quit out. I wonder how the AI would deal with that. That's interesting. Because if you're in a big, slow ship, that doesn't really matter too much. 
turret is hand cranked. <laughs> There's no money for an extra generator. That's the problem. It's really the most pared down, um, the pared down Sarmat you could get, really. But anyway, well done to them for getting that in there. What's next? That was the dais. Next up, we got this Vihander. One guy cranking the turret, indeed. Ooh, big ship. Big ship. 4AK 100s with no elevation problems. I think it's within budget. We've got four engines internally, two big RD 51 engines. That's actually results in a lot of armor for the bottom as well. Um, just, just, yeah, this is a ship. Any, don't think there's any, um, there's no active that, that, again, you might run into some problems with these fuel tanks behind the armor. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize that this is a very, this could cause a lot of fires, but it's still very cool to see. That's a huge gladiator. Awesome. All right. Next up, we've got the Herring Mark III from Tinelux. Let's check this out. Cute. Uh, we've got Palash, depending on the lower half of the ship. We've got Zenith on the sides. We've got three D80 Molots here, which is a good amount of firepower. Um, it's kind of a side grade from the original Gladiator, not a downgrade. Uh, uh, 319 kilometers per hour is 757 kilometers in range. Yep, within requirements, excellent. This is another great um, entry. Putting the guns at the top here just means that it, if it's shooting up, it's got great convergence, not so great shooting down, but that's fine. Good, another good ship, that's cool. Finally, we've got your Portobello Twitter. I'm excited to see this actually. This should be pretty cool. I like your mushroom ships a lot. Ooh, wow. One, two, three, four, six AK 100s. Beep. <laughs> uh, big fuel tank, two big RD 59s, downward facing Zenith, upward facing Zenith as well. Do we have any active defenses in here? Or is it just armor? Looks like it's just armor. Um, that's cool. It's like a really, really big. Um, Looks like another ship. I can't think what ship it is at the moment, but the shape is very vindictive. Four Zeta, six guns, lots of armor, internal engines. Um, those two RD 59s will keep it in the air for a while. That's, that's, that's a, that's, that, that is a contender. That is a real contender. All right. Well, we've now gone through all the gladiators as well. That's all of them done. Um, that's all of the phase one ships. This is lore friendly for its design as well. Yeah, because it's, uh, um, it's also themed after a mushroom at the same time, but it is lore friendly. Whew. We done it. We've done all the phase one ships. That is a lot to go through. So, um, my job is to get this stream time stamped, get the other one time stamped. We're not going to sneak peek at the Vari exhibitions, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to close off the courageous voting and we're going to have a look at the courageous winners before I end the stream. I'm not going to stay for too much longer. I do have, it's a, it's a work night, sadly for me. And it's nearly, it's actually after midnight, but we can go for a little bit longer. Let's just, switch to this i'm just getting it ready off screen bear with me courageous round one voting let's just set that to no longer accepting responses now everybody has gotten votes some ships not as many as others i hope nobody is disappointed if their ship didn't get a lot of votes we're not going to dwell on any ships that didn't get a lot of votes i think everyone has done a fantastic job and i'm really really happy with everything you've submitted what we're going to look at is the ships that have won the votes. Um, so what I'll do is we'll look at them in the voting and then I'll load them into the game if I can. So just bear with me two seconds because I need to set that up. So I need to close High Fleet. All right, I'm just going to grab the winning ships really quickly and load them into High Fleet and then you'll get to see what's going on. Give me just a couple seconds. Ships, delete this. Delete. Ships file, courageous. So the winner of bracket one is this ship here. I'll actually just show you. Let's just show you. Why, why am I hiding it from you? You guys need to see this. Okay, let me get this to show my desktop. Give me one more second. I want to capture screen at source. Okay, you should be now seeing my screen. So we're going to look at the bracket winners for the courageouses. Okay. So bracket one, if we check the questions that had the tiny Tim, the Fang, the cozy crab, the courageous Mark II, the invader, the otter and the cabin. The winner for that is the tiny Tim by golden floof. So everybody has voted the majority of the votes. So 40, 39.1% of the votes in bracket one were for the tiny Tim. The RD-59 Courageous has made it through bracket one, okay? 
Hooray for me. Turns out the people watching my videos <laughs> get floofed. <laughs> I will be getting floofed by the looks of it. Okay, bracket two with 45.7% of the vote is the Cenotaph by Corazon Ray. So we have a look at, at, at wave two. It, it puts a big smile on my face too. We had the Cenotaph by Corazon Ray. That's the aircraft carrier AK-100 Courageous. The Sparrow, the a AX-3 Courageous, which is a design I really liked. The D-119 Engineer. The Supreme Patriarch Fencer. The Beloved by Tuzit 2, which had the Mark 180 Cannon. And the Bullet Mark II by Nickname Thomas was also a really nice ship. But the Cenotaph by Corazon Ray it was the second ship that has made it through to round two, the bracket two. All right. Then in bracket three, we have the Ant, sorry, we have the Century by OKB's Vedza has, with 43.8% of the vote. So we have a look at that really quickly. Bracket three. We've got the Ant, which is a cute little ship. We've got the Lock, which is another cute little bunny ship. I like that a lot. We've got the Reckless by Cifrin, which was incredibly fast, all bombs and missiles. We have the Cricket by Orange Elephant, which is quite nice. It's ships had big for me like this, yeah. The Amber by Sea Duck that had the AK-100, the tall thing. And the Century by OKBZ Vizvidza has the AK-100. It had um, armor on the left-hand side for airstrikes coming in from the left. Uh, it, had, um, it has a fire control system and it has a sprint missile launcher. So the ships that have won the vote so far are um, RD uh, R3 missile ballistic missile launcher, um, aircraft carrier, and anti-aircraft anti um, ship as well. So in bracket four, we've got very, this has been, I've been watching bracket four every day because this has been the one that has been the tightest on voting. Come on, yes you did. We've just finished going through all of the sloggers and the gladiators. I'm going through the winners of the first round of courageous voting right now. I'm so sorry you missed it. There's been some great ships. Some great, great terrifying ships. Um, but bracket four, it's been so tight between the I have been gooped by fastball and the cockroach by orange elephant. Literally 25% to 24.4. The orange elephant got 42 votes. Uh, sorry, the um, cockroach got 42 votes and the fastball got 43 votes. It was down to within one vote, but fastball has won. That's in bracket four. So we had the ghost by Ensign Foil that had the two Zeniths and the AK-100. The fastball by I Have Been Gooped has the fire control laser and the AK fire control system and the AK-100. Um, the cockroach was the double 57 millimeter gun, which one which was uh, I was quite scared of that getting voted in. There was also the caddis fly in here, which had the um, DD Mola. The hobo was in here too, which is the one that looked like an aircraft carrier. Um, there's also a 57 millimeter one here from the sheriff and Dwoms, and also the expendable, which had a 57 millimeter and four rockets. But the fastball is the one that won, so that is yet another utility ship. And then finally, uh, bracket five next, with a big majority, 44.8%. The Weevil by Orange Elephant has won this one. So we'll check it out bracket five here. Bracket five had the Muzini by Greywood's Adventure. This is our first example of the spaced, um, spaced armor as a defense system. The Mayfly by Orange Elephant, which had the sprints and uh, the um, AK-100. The Valanus by Shieldbearer, which had the 37mm, which was quite an interesting design. But the Courageous 1A by Kipco, which had, I think, an AK-100. The Robin by Balzos Korma with the 57mm. The Chrysanthemum by NC Mixum, which is another cool ship. But the Weevil by Orange Elephant, the Mini Flower was the one that won here with the 57mm gun and the four um, Zeniths. That's, that's a scary ship again. And then finally in round six, so bracket six is not fine. We've got bracket seven. I thought there were so many courageouses. 36.8% oh, of the vote. Uh, 64 votes is the Valiant by Many Headed Mishaps. So we have a quick check at, at bracket six. We've got, oh, I'm so happy the ship won. Um, I love the Valiant. I think it might be, I'm sorry to play favorites. It might be my favorite ship that's been submitted just because it looks so different. Um, but we also have the Sloam Sig Courageous with the 257mm. That's a very heavy armament for a Courageous. Mosquito here with a very good, nice armor design. The Cockatoo is a really cute ship that I really liked as well. The Horseman with the two AK-100s. The Baku, the most cursed ship in the whole competition, the Salamander. But the Valiant 1, it has sprints, it has fire control, it has an AK-100, it has bombs. It kind of has everything going on in it. It is another multi-role ship that is won. And then having a look at bracket 7 before we reveal the winner of it. 
We've got the pole tune with AK100. We've got the termite here, which is a great looking design with 257 millimeters. The courageous IRST, which is kind of misnamed, but it has two Zeniths and it has the bombs. Staghound T here with the AK100. Um, the Mycena uh, with, with the AK100 at the top. This is a, one of the mushroom designs. The Slim Jim from Floof, which is really cute. And the Nimble, which I think if I remember was very, very fast. The winner of bracket seven. Again, another very tight vote. In the end was the Nimble by Cygnus. Can the Valiant do war crimes? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. It can bomb things. It has a, it has a, it has a couple of bombs. Um, they're very interesting. You're right, Golden Floof. But the Nimble won bracket seven. So that is, our, I think, our only dedicated combat ship. Which is a very, very fast Courageous, if I remember correctly. So what I'm also going to need to do is put together our last voting bracket of these ships. And we'll get the final Courageous voted on this week. So I'm going to get that ready to go again this week. We're going to leave the voting open on the Ballistic for another day. Um, just to remind everybody, flower voting is open. The... the um, the form to vote for flowers is available in the description of this video and it is in the announcements channel on the discord tomorrow i'm going to finish getting the rest of these ships from phase one time stamped so we can get votes going for them and we're going to close off phase three voting we'll get the phase two live streams done so we can go through those ships there's going to be bigger ships it's going to be quite good fun and uh yeah we'll go from there but that's all i've got to go through tonight I didn't want this to be too long a stream. We've hit two hours again, pretty much on the dot, which is pretty nice. I do want to get playing some games again on stream. I'm desperate to finish Hard Space. Um, I want to get another Terra Invicta stream going. Um, but this is just taking up a lot of time right now, and I want to get through it. Because if we don't get through it, it's going to just be dragging on forever. And I want to get High Fleet started again. So um, I just want to thank you all for hanging out with me tonight. It's been really nice having you all along to check out the ships. I hope you all have great weekends, whether it's over or just starting or in the middle. And... Uh, yeah, stay safe out there. <laughs> yes, Tavian, it, it, exactly. I, I was just planning out the most epic campaign ever, but never actually playing it. Um, thank you all for, for hanging out, and uh, I will catch you all on the flip side. Um, but for now, have a good one. I'm going to bed. I'm going to have a good sleep, and I will speak to you all tomorrow. Catch you later. Ciao.